Hello everyone and welcome to my first Forge video where I'm going to show you how you can reference objects that are in the world in your scripts. So I've got this blank world here and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the player can spawn. So I'm going to hit R and I'm going to go to gameplay, player spawning, and I'm going to do spawn point initial here. I'm going to click and now we've got this player spawn, but he's all the way up in the air and instead of dragging this around and making it all difficult, um, I'm going to just hit end on the keyboard so it's snapped to ground. Hit that. Our player spawn is now on the ground. Very nice. So if I hit F6, I'm able to spawn in here. Great. All right, so now we want to add an object to the world that we want to script against. So let's go ahead and add something. I'm going to go to props, sports, and then soccer ball. Cool. So now we've got this big soccer ball here, and if I go into play mode, go. cool. So let's go ahead and since we want to add some scripting to this, let's click on our object that we want to script, in this case the soccer ball. And with that object selected, I'm going to go to up in the um, top toolbar of this tool window. I'm going to go to object properties with this little cog right here. Um, we can see that um, we can give the object a name, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to give this a name um, in lower camel case, which means it's going to look like this, like my soccer ball. Um, so I'm going to hit confirm. And so now we've got a great name for it. We will remember that when we're scripting. And then we need to make sure, lastly, that this object is in dynamic mode. So we have static and dynamic objects. You can think of static objects as being kind of the objects in the world, like maybe barriers or walls. And then dynamic objects are things that you want to move around. You want to script against them. So you won't be able to script against static objects. So it's important to keep this in mind um, before we get into the scripting portion. So what I'm going to do here is since um, we want to do some scripting, uh, I'm going to hold Q and then I'm going to just go up and click on node graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and just exit this real quick to show you that when you enter node graph without a script brain selected, it is going to create you one. So these script brains are containers for your logic. They're almost like, you know, just isolated um, segments of the game's logic. So what I'm going to do here is again, I'm going to hold down Q with the script brain selected and go back into node graph. So let's say that we want to get an object reference to the soccer ball. Well, we're going to open up the node graphs window right here, this node browser with, uh, by hitting the R key. And then I'm going to go to, um, variables basic and I'm going to get ob the object reference node. So now that I have this object reference node, um, I need to go back into our window. And by the way, here, this node right here, this output of this, this output is going to be our soccer ball, if that makes sense. So this is going to be a reference to our object that's in the world. So again, I'm going to have this selected. I'm going to hit R. I'm going to go into node properties, and then I'm going to get the object. Now, what I did here is I just clicked where it says empty or just on this whole row here of this output. This is showing the outputs of this node. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to click this and then in here, I'm going to find my soccer ball. So I've found it right here. I'm going to click that and now voila, I have my soccer ball. So I want to do something with this. So a great way to get started is um, I'm going to go back into the node browser and I'm going to find events and then on object spawned. So what's happening here is we're saying, hey, when the soccer ball is spawned, go. And if that makes so this is basically um, this this chaining right here with these diamond blocks. Um, these are to invoke other events. So if I want to say respond to when the soccer ball is spawned, I would take another node, let's say for instance, let's go to just to make something simple, go to logic and then wait for n number of seconds is what this says right here essentially. So we're going to connect these together. And so when this object is spawned, 
we're going to wait for, and then I'm going to go into the properties of this node here. Remember, you're always going to go into these node properties in order to modify these values. So I'm going to wait for, and I'm going to click. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just clicking on the seconds. I'm going to enter five seconds, hit confirm. And then what do we want to do after five seconds after the ball is spawned? Well, maybe what we want to do is let's go to uh, objects and then delete object. So if I do this and then I um, chain this together, and then what object do we want to delete? Well, we want to delete our soccer ball object. So you can kind of see how um, the logic here is flowing. And I've, I've organized it like this, uh, this shape um, because this is pretty traditional when you get into visual scripting. It's to kind of make this cascading almost um, shape. Uh, it makes it easy to just look at and kind of diagnose. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump back into the world. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit F6, and it says node graph built successfully. So you should see our ball disappear in five seconds. Cool. Well, so that's basically it on how to get your uh, references uh, into your scripts from your world. Um, it's, it's really simple, um, and it really offers a great way to get started and to kind of get your feet wet playing around with Forge. So... I hope that really helped you. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this, so take your time and just think about um, you know the different opportunities that you have now. So, alrighty. Um, well, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in another video here shortly. Um, I plan on making a lot of content for uh, Halo Infinite's Forge mode. So, stick with the channel, and uh, we'll see you guys later.